Welcome to the Masai Mara, a Kenyan paradise for animals of all shapes and sizes. I've spent the past two days exploring this magical Eden and come across some sightings that will stay with me for a lifetime. But despite our best attempts, one of my favorite animals, the leopard, has so far eluded me. But the search isn't over yet. We still have two more days of safari ahead of us and I'm hoping that just maybe my dream will come true and we'll stumble across a leopard. We've just received a call on the radio that there might be a leopard around, but we don't know if we're gonna get there in time. Join me on the safari of a lifetime in the Masai Mara. Good morning. It's a new day here in the Masai Mara. We're we'll up a little bit later today, it's seven, because we're not going on a morning game drive today. We're gonna just chill here for a little bit and then maybe go on an afternoon one. Okay, I've come to breakfast and I mean, look at this. What a place to have breakfast. In this tree down here, there's a lot of little weaver birds. You can hear them making their cute little noises. They're weaving together their little nest. You can see them like jumping around in the nest. So we're just having our breakfast now and I could hear some splashing. I looked over and the zebras were in the river there and they have just come out. And this is how close they are to where we're eating. We have a lovely morning spent relaxing before it's time for the day's adventures to begin. Hello, my name's Ella. My name is Patrick. Patrick, great to meet you. Welcome. Patrick and Joseph from Shamjoy Tours will be our guides for the next few days. Yes. Specifically made for photography. I know, that's amazing. This is the first time we've been in a photography vehicle. In just a few moments, we are in the Masai Mara National Reserve, surrounded by zebras and glancing in adoration at a baby giraffe. But then, we find ourselves in a line of vehicles all queuing up for a sighting. A ranger is waving everyone along so that we all get a turn viewing the animal. Then, it's our turn. And I cannot believe it. We found a leopard. But the sighting is so fleeting, as no sooner had we arrived, we were being waved on. So that was amazing, we just saw a leopard, but we couldn't stay long because there's the queue of cars and everyone seems to have an allotted time of just a few minutes and then they're polite and let the next car go in and then, as you can see that was moving away already, and then it keeps going on. So we didn't get to hang around with the leopard much, but that's okay, I'm very happy that we got to see her. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy to have seen a leopard, but if I'm honest, I'm not the kind of person who just ticks experiences off a list and moves on. I still craved a proper leopard encounter, one where I wasn't moved on after just a minute. I could only hope that this dream would come true in our last 24 hours in the Mara. As we're driving into the sunset, something catches my attention. Okay, this is really cool. So, behind me is a hyena on a dead topi, on a kill feasting and the vultures keep coming and trying to join in but the hyena's having none of it and keeps chasing them off. This hyena wants this banquet for himself and he's not sharing with anyone. So cool to see this. It's one of the it's one of my favourite sightings so far actually. Well I feel like I'm saying that about everything. But um to see a predator just on a kill is just so cool. And I really like the hyenas. I think they're quite misunderstood. Lots of people just don't like them and think they're ugly, but I think they're really adorable. And yeah, they're really intelligent animals, so it's really cool to see them. We continue our journey and soon come across this young hyena relaxing at the side of the road. Can you look at this face and really say that hyenas aren't cute? So we just saw a little hyena at the side of the road and it was just adorable. And he just looked like the cutest little thing ever. Just there like butter wouldn't melt. He lifted his head up and it was like, oh my God, oh my God, it's so exciting. He lifted his head up and then suddenly the hyena just got up and <laughs> Lewis was so worried it was going to charge into the vehicle. So he stopped recording in like a panic, but then the hyena just ran off. And if you see how these, how open all the windows are. <laughs> I saw just, my light flash before my eyes. And it was like by the road and like you can see how close that is. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. The gates will be closing soon, so we start to speed up. But the Mara really is putting on a show for us this evening, presenting us with this pair of grey-crowned cranes bathed in golden hour light, followed by a group of hearty beasts, glowing orange in the setting sun.
We could only hope that the reserve would allow us some slack, as it really didn't look like we'd be reaching the gate in time. The sun starts to dip below the hills just before we reach the gate, gifting us with the most magical sunset of the trip so far. Now we really have to leave. Okay, we have arrived. Hello. Mambo. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Welcome. Good. Thank Hello. you. Asante yeah. Sana. So here we are at our home for the next two nights. This is our lovely tent. We have a nice seating area where we have lots of tea, which is perfect because I'm obsessed with tea. And we've got our beds here, which are really comfortable. And there's this like Maasai shuka. We can wear that for cold in the morning. Stuff for the luggage. And then in here, we have our bathroom. We have the sink, the toilet, and then we have a little shower. So we've got everything you need in here. I'm really excited to be here. The staff are all super friendly, super helpful. And probably the best thing about this is literally it's five minutes arrive from the gate to the Maasai Mara. So tomorrow when we get up early, it will only take us five minutes from leaving here to enter the Maasai Mara. After settling into our comfortable room, we head down to the communal area for some dinner. I totally overloaded my plate at the buffet and tucked into a filling meal to end the day. Good morning. We have woken up at half five today and we've just got down for a quick breakfast at six before we head out on our early morning safari. So I'm just here in the breakfast area and for breakfast I have taken this from the buffet. I've got some pancakes, some sausage and some bacon. Now I just need to eat it quickly so we can be out on safari as the gate opens. As soon as we enter the reserve, we are gifted with our first sighting. A pair of jackals who seem in an awful hurry to be somewhere. We decide to follow them and soon discover that the tantalizing smell of fresh meat has drawn them to a feast. A clan of hyenas are chowing down the remains of some now unrecognizable animal who fell in the night. It's impossible to say whether the hyenas made this kill themselves or whether they scavenged it from lions. Despite their reputation for being scavengers, hyenas are actually extremely successful hunters and are more likely to lose their meals to lions rather than the other way around. It's amazing to see how fast nature's cleanup crew can work. The kill was likely made only a few hours ago, and already it's been reduced to little more than bones, and soon even they will be gone. In nature, nothing is wasted. Some topi, accompanied by their young, skittishly wander past the feasting predators, but the hyenas aren't interested. Their bellies will be full for a little while now. We continue our journey, passing this majestic eagle, a group of topis, and this large congregation of animals. Thompson's gazelles, wildebeest, zebras and baboons are all racing about, feeling fresh as the sun gently rises above the hills. We then encounter a group of buffaloes, accompanied by this mother and calf. The calf has only one thing on its mind and isn't deterred on its quest to get milk, even when the group moves off. There are two zebras out there, two males, and they are fighting for dominance. They're really going for it with each other, biting each other's ankles, rearing up each other, biting each other's necks. It'll be interesting to see who the victor is, but it's really cool to see them in action like this. The duo are showing no signs of settling their differences anytime soon, and so we move on. As we meander through the bush, we get a call on the radio. Right, so we've just heard on the radio that there's a cheetah, and it's near where we were before, where we saw some buffaloes. We turned around, and we're just racing to get to the sighting. There's a load of cars here, just in convoy, all trying to make it to this cheetah sighting. We have a bit of a distance to go, so hopefully we'll still be there. Sit 
sleeping there. Ah, there she is, she's making yeah. it. It's carnage here, there's cars everywhere, all trying to get a look at this cheetah. Oh, <laughs> I went off again, high speed. Following this cheetah, has just gone into the ditch. Oh, there we go. We found him, the dominant male of the area called Mwanga, which means light in Swahili. He's on the hunt, stealthily making his way towards a group of gazelles. But he's unable to get within striking distance without being seen. Cover blown, the gazelles and zebras taunt him, following him through the savanna, snorting their displeasure. Having lost the element of surprise, the herbivores know he doesn't stand much of a chance of catching them now, although Mwanga's unexpected role sends a group of gazelles racing off in terror. Full belly or not, as the resident male, Mwanga still has a big job to do and continues patrolling and scent marking his territory, warning other male cheetahs to keep out. We watch as his patrol takes him out of sight. Our safari so far has been out of this world. In under 24 hours, we have already seen so much wildlife and it's mainly thanks to our fantastic guides who are incredible at wildlife tracking and spotting. If you'd like to book your own Kenya safari, click the link in the video description and pin comment. It gives you the opportunity to get quotes from the very same tour operators who I went on safari with and who I highly recommend. Our next encounter is of this large family of elephants happily munching on some fresh grass. I notice that one of the elephants only has half a tail and I'm left wondering what her story is. That's the beautiful thing about every animal you encounter on safari. They all have a unique story to tell. And then, we find some of the savannah's kings. These are two nomadic males who belong to no pride. One of them has taken the fancy of one of the resident pride's females. She's known as the scar-eyed lioness and belongs to the Majayafisi pride. For the next few days, she and this male will be inseparable. The other male can only watch from the sidelines. We move on and come across a huge herd of buffaloes, several hundred members strong. I've never seen so many together like this. But it's just crazy that there's so many of them here. If I asked you what the most dangerous animal to encounter whilst on safari is, you'd probably say lions. In actual fact, buffaloes are far more dangerous. They have a nasty temper and aren't afraid to charge you if they feel you're too close. The most dangerous buffaloes are the ones who are in small groups or who are alone. When in a large herd like this, they feel secure and are far more docile. Even so, this baby gazelle clearly got way too close for one of the buffaloes liking. As we move off, I have no idea that one of my favorite sightings of the day is just around the corner. Movement from within the long grass catches our attention and we turn to see a majestic female cheetah emerge into the open, but she's not alone. Look at the babies. They're so cute. So right now we are here and there is a female cheetah who has four adorable cubs. This isn't just any cheetah. This is eight-year-old Nashapai, a beautiful cheetah who we had the pleasure of meeting three days ago. Watching her four young cubs frolic about was definitely a safari highlight for me. And here she is again, strolling majestically through the Mara, her four-month-old cubs not far behind her. Her 
Her cubs are three females and one male, and they are full of energy, eager to play with mum. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. gosh the cuteness is too much oh it has been so amazing so far just watching the cheetah cubs as they jump on their mother it's so cute so wholesome i feel so happy my heart feels happy just watching these four little babies with their mother Cheetah families are constantly on the move in search of food. Leaving the cubs for long periods whilst mum goes hunting is simply too risky, and so their days are largely spent like this. We watch as the young family gradually disappear from view. Just received a call on the radio. There is a leopard around, but we don't know if we're going to get there in time. So we're just on our way, rushing again, seeing if we can get there to see the leopard. Because we saw one yesterday, but we only got a tiny glimpse. We couldn't stay too long, so seeing another one would be pretty incredible. We arrive at the same tree as yesterday, and just like yesterday, there's a bunch of cars already in the best viewing positions. Suddenly... Oh my gosh. Oh no gosh, I missed it. At first I think all is lost, but then... Oh, it's gone high. Oh, okay. Are you able to see it? Uh, it's gone high in the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can now. see it. He's on top. Yeah. yeah. The leopard climbs to the top of the tree to where she's stashed her kill that she caught the previous day. I honestly didn't expect what she does next. Oh yeah, it's got its food in its mouth. It's got it, it's got it in its mouth. It's bringing, it's bringing the meat down the tree. He's coming down, he's coming down. Oh yeah, I can see him at the bottom, yeah, yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. This is incredible. Can you see behind me? There is a female leopard eating um, a kill of a baby taunting gazelle. It feels amazing. I can't believe how lucky we are to see this. <laughs> Leopards are so hard to see. So to see one in the open like this feeding is like extremely rare. I don't know what compelled her to start eating her kill within plain sight. It's almost as if she wanted to put on a show for us. I wanted to pinch myself. My fortunes at spotting leopards in the Maasai Mara had turned in the blink of an eye. This leopard is a female known as Leluca. She's one of the most famous leopards in the whole of the Maasai Mara. For a long while, we're not in the best position. Her back to us as other cars sit in the prime viewing spots. But having a little bit of patience whilst on safari really pays off, as one by one, the other cars gradually move on, giving us the very best spot. There were lots of cars here earlier, but now it's just us and one of the vehicle. So it feels quite special mm -hmm. having the sighting to ourselves. It's extremely rare to see this. Leopards are the hardest big out to see, one of the hardest animals. It's amazing.
We stay with her for a while, still unable to believe our luck and determined to make the most of this extremely special sighting. But eventually, we decide it's time to leave her to finish off her meal alone. What a way to wrap up four days of safari in the Maasai Mara. As we enjoy some lunch in the middle of the bush, we reflect on just how spectacular our time in this serene pocket of wilderness has been. If you thought the sightings on this safari were amazing, just wait until you see what we saw on our previous two days of safari in this video here.